love. Found dead in an alley of words, awesome, no hope for it. And share, which must have fallen trying to get by on its own. And near the trash cans, almost totally exhausted, the barely breathing cool. But there's love among the disposables, waiting as ever to be lifted into consequence. And here comes a forager looking for anything that might get him through another night. Love's right in front of him, his if he wants it. In the air, the ashy smell of cliches, the stink of obsolescence. He's leaning love's way. All the words are watching, even the dead ones. It's as if what he does next could be the equivalent of, of restoring awe to awesome, that love, if chosen, might be given back to love, made new again. But the man is just a man out for easy pickings. Or has he remembered how at first love always feels original? Let us forgive him if he keeps on foraging. Response to a letter from France. All the trees are in bloom, though the gypsy moths with their plague mentality are blossoming too. Don't feel sorry for us. We've even learned to live amid Republicans. The avarice of gypsy moths is only a little more mindless, effective. It's okay here. The ocean isn't perfectly clean, but on good days when I get low enough, the waves push me out ahead of them. Lacking wings or an engine, it's the closest thing to flight. In France, where life and theory touch now and then, I don't doubt your pleasures, but here there's room enough for incorrect behavior, which some of us plan on. There are casinos and 50 or 60 miles of pines to get lost in. Socialism makes good sense, sure, but we actually have four people who love us. The tennis courts aren't crowded. Our neighbor, who has no politics, was generous yesterday for other reasons. At another time, I would offer you what falls short of promise, the America outside of me and my part in it, but not when you feel sorry for us. I just killed a brown recluse spider. The sun is out. I want you to know the afternoon is ablaze with ordinary people smiling, full of hidden unfulfillment everywhere, my friend. at the Smithville Methodist Church. It was supposed to be arts and crafts for a week, but when she came home with the Jesus Saves button, we knew what art was up, what ancient craft. She liked her little friends. She liked the songs they sang when they weren't twisting and folding paper into dolls. What could be so bad? Jesus had been a good man, and putting faith in good men was what we had to do to stay this side of cynicism that other sadness. Okay, we said, one week. But when she came, so, came home singing, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so, it was time to talk. Could we say, Jesus doesn't love you? Could I tell her, the Bible is a great book certain people use to make you feel bad? We sent her back without a word. It had been so long since we believed, so long since we needed Jesus as our nemesis and friend that we thought he was sufficiently dead, that our children would think of him like Lincoln or Thomas Jefferson. Soon it became clear to us, you can't teach disbelief to a child, only wonderful stories, and we hadn't a story nearly as good. On parents' night, there were the arts and crafts, all spread out like appetizers. Then we took our seats in the church and the children sang a song about the ark and hallelujah, and one in which they had to jump up and down for Jesus. I can't remember ever feeling so uncertain about what's common, what's serious. Evolution is magical, but devoid of heroes. You can't say to your child, evolution loves you. The, the story stinks of extinction, and nothing exciting happens for centuries. I didn't have a wonderful story for my child, and she was beaming. All the way home in the car, she sang the songs occasionally standing up for Jesus. 
There was nothing to do but drive, ride it out, sing along in silence.